Hi, in this video we're going to show you some of the more advanced features of BenchView test flow. When you start up BenchView and en enable the test flow window, you get the screen shown here. Um, there, we have preloaded four instruments on the left, so you'll see the DMM, function generator, oscilloscope, and power supply. And on the right, you see the empty pane where we can start creating a sequence. By clicking the More Blocks button here, we can see that there are a lot of features built into test flow that aren't actually uh, obvious. <laughs> so let's look at these. Basic blocks, loops, and advanced. All right, we'll look at these one at a time. So let's grab one and pull it into the test flow sequence. This is a delay. It's a simple one second delay. You can change that to whatever you want. Uh, we could put in a five second delay. So what you might use this for is, for example, turning on a power supply and then waiting for it to stabilize. So here we've chosen a power supply channel, turn it on, wait five seconds for it to stabilize. Pretty simple. But suppose we want to do something a little more exotic. Let's say we want to wait until the power supply voltage uh, the measured power supply voltage is a certain value. So we can drag the power supply measurement into this wait until block and let's say we want to wait until the voltage is greater than a certain number. For example, let's say 4.75 volts. Let's say you have a TTL type circuit and you want to wait until the voltage is at least the minimum before you proceed testing anything. Okay, now let's say that the voltage comes up, but it goes into current limit. Um, now there's two ways of doing that. You can actually set the current limit on the power supply, but let's suppose that we have that set for, let's say, um, 3 amps. And we don't really want it to continue if the current draw is greater than 2 amps. So what we can do is measure the current and say if the current measurement is greater than or equal to 2 amps then we want to do something. What do we want to do? Our choices are either run blocks inside and halt or halt immediately. So if we run the blocks inside that means execute the blocks in this section right in here. What we might want to do is turn the power supply off. So we can just drag the on off in here and turn it off. And we might also want to tell the operator that we did that so we might bring the prompt over here and say current <laughs> if I can spell current is too high okay pretty simple and let's see what we can do with the count alright we can repeat end, end times so whatever we want to do there let's say we want to uh, take a voltage measurement so we'll go over here to the voltmeter and drag a voltage measurement in here okay we want to repeat that let's say five times that's all there is to that one suppose we want to do it for a fixed length of time though we can repeat until let's say uh, one minute has passed alright so that's really the basics of doing loops uh, there's also a while loop and an until loop so let's look at those repeat while the little red X here means that no end condition has been specified yet, which we already know since we haven't done it. So we can drag conditions here. Repeat while. Um, let's say that we want to repeat while the voltage is 
less than five volts. So you see the idea, we, we take conditions, measurements, um, settings, whatever we want, anything that's got an orange box around it, and drag it into these loops. Now, while the voltage being measured is less than five, we can do other things here. We might say want to, um, oh, I don't know, change a, a frequency on a, or change an amplitude, let's say, on a function generator. So we could drag that over here, and as long as the measured voltage from the voltmeter is less than five, we could do something with some other instrument. Let's just take a look at that. We can change the block type to a set and just change the amplitude on the function generator. Now, I'd like to also point out here that the numbers that we're using here, the one get measurement value, um, two set channel amplitude, let's refer to the instrument number up here, one and two, and those came from the instrument number in the instrument bar down at the bottom here. We also have this uh, until loop, repeat until a condition is true, and then what we can do is either repeat until a time has passed or until a count has occurred. And we can say repeat until any or repeat until all conditions are met. Okay, so that's what you can do with the loops. There's two other things I want to show you. There's two special blocks here in the advanced section. One is Skippy and one is external. These can be very useful. Um, the Skippy block lets you send Skippy commands and SCPI of course stands for Standard Commands for Programmable Instruments. It is the low-level ASCII commands that all of the instruments respond to. Even when you use drivers, you're basically inside the driver using Skippy commands. So a typical one might be uh, star TST for a test routine, or IDN query. When you put a question mark on there, it knows that it's a return value, and it will return the value and then show you the results. These all are logged, so when you run this sequence, uh, the data that is retrieved can be exported to uh, Word or Excel. The external program is also interesting because it lets you call an external program that you might have written. Let's say you've written a fancy routine to capture a screenshot from an instrument that is not one of the supported instruments in uh, BenchView. You can call it from within the sequence. There are many examples you can also get to. It does require an internet connection to go out and get these examples, but uh, there are a lot out there for various instruments. That's it. Thanks for listening.